Chapter Five: The Twelve Flans of Tantrum Ordinarily, he got turned to fish legs in honor. Horror! It wasn't you, was it? Fish legs? He is the personally at his friend. Of course, it couldn't happen. Fish legs was always certain and a quarter. He was far too young to be sending love poetry to beautiful silky princesses with hermetical menses for fathers. But fish legs was redder than a sunset. He pushed his glasses farther onto his nose and mumbled so slow that he could barely hear him. Mm, he coughed. I've been practicing my poetry. You see, it's quite a good poem, don't you see? Said Fishlegs, proud of his artistic effort, despite the peril of the moment. Although the word "cut" throughout it is not very poetry, I had some t- trouble with it. Poetry isn't as easy as it looks. What are you talking about, you loon? He said, "Who cares if it is a good poem or not?" Only hogs are not exactly picky about their poetry. They're much better at removing people's hands and tying their arms in complicated reef reef knots. The thing is, why in Wooden's name did you send her the beastly, beastly poem in the first place? Fish legs was now wider than a piece of paper. I just thought she was quite pure and pretty, and so she was inspiring my poetry. The thing is, explained fish legs, I'm not sure whether the whole hooligan warrior starts and axes, granting and something thing is really working for me. So I was just thinking that if I failed the training program, which let's face it, is quite likely, I could only start out as a poet, uh, making my way up to being a wandering minstrel, maybe end up as a bird, even. It's a good idea, fish legs. I'm not knocking it. Say、so、he got bad. Let's talk about your career opportunities later. Now we have a problem. I'm sorry, Hiccup said. Fish legs. Fish legs took his glasses off and put them on again in a worried sort of way. He swallowed hard. What do you think he's going to do to me? He wish. He whispered back to Hiccup. He'll going. He's going to kill you. He can explain patiently, horribly, but mercifully, quickly if you're lucky. You think so? Said Fishlegs quaveringly. I not only think so. I know so. Said Hika. To even get to be one of her f- finances in the first place, you have to be very be of royal blood. I'm afraid we are living in prejudiced times, and by the Reckoning that means that's on the spot for you. Okay, spell out. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask the culprit to own up. I'll count to five. One, two, three. I have to own up. Fish legs whispered, or else we'll all get killed. It's been nice knowing you, Hiccup. For said Ugg warmly. Fish legs got unsteady to his feet and sn- shakily wiped his steam out glasses. On his shirt before jamming them back on his nose, and then went. Wait, he got whispered. I think I may have a plan, a clever one. Replied Fishlegs hopefully. Oh, for sore sake, said he got cleverish. There's no time to be fussy. Stop! Yelled he got. Everyone turn around and look at him. Oh bother! This was going to be hard. I wrote the poem, said he got. There was a short. Astonished silence. He could look at Snowlord or Dobrez and Do- Dobrin, who were beside themselves to whiskey. Your hair wrote the poem. Stoic, chuckle up, and all like hug, leaning back in the throne and taking a good long puff on his cigar. I knew there'd be a happy ending. He got cried. Stoic, the best. You didn't write the letter, did you? I'm afraid so, Father. Like. He called snort, snort, snort. Went so loud and dark rage and dabbing. What does this mean? Says Doctor Vest, trying to take it. 
in. It means roll out the owl like hub. Very, very pleased with himself. That according to our barbaric code, your son, Hika Hardens had of the sir, being of royal blood, ha has had the excellent good luck to become the latest fiancé of my dearly beloved daughter, Princess Tantrum O. A girly. But, but, but. Plus, this like the vest, trying to focus on just one of these reasons, he felt that this was a golf smacky bad idea. What about the age difference? I don't know you'll find the age difference in France is a problem. Green act I like her to actually marry my daughter. We would have to pass the impossible task at that I said. You said the last of fiance, said so Hiccup. How many fans have you actually had, Princess Tantrum? Eleven, said Tantrum, tossing her hair and staring her father a look so furious that his beard should have gone up in flames on the spot. That's counting the fans before the fans before last, who is the one I love and am actually going to marry. Love, sneered Agda Alaka, a princess can marry for love. Besides, I am not sure that the fans before the fans before last really counts, because I think he was lying about his royal blood. I am not going to marry somebody just because they have stayed at home royal blood, father, Storm Tantrum. I am sick of castles and roofs and bodyguards and jewels. I am going to marry a hero. I am going to marry my hero and sail into the sunset and sleep under the stars and live by the sword and let our boat take us wherever the wind blows us. I am going to marry my hero. The fans before the fans before last who is the one i love yes well there's a tiny problem about that isn't there ten tantrum smell up the i like how your hero never returned from the impossible task if he was a true hero he would have returned he will return said tantrum stubbornly tossing her beautiful hair and crossing her arms he will return i'm waiting for him of course you can't wait, Tantra, my dear, said Agda Alaka, but you may be waiting a long time. You may be waiting forever. I can't wait a long time, said Tantra. I can't wait forever. Well, just keep on waiting, could Agda Alaka. Don't let me stop you in the meantime. He turned to stalk the vest. My only criteria for, for my daughter Tantra's hand in marriage is royal blood. Ha! Tantrum started and tossed her hair. And for the fans of provide one barrel of meat for your honeymoon. Stike the vest cheered up like anything. Is that the impossible task? He said eagerly. That doesn't sound impossible at all. The impossible task I had to complete when I got married was much harder than that. I had to fetch the fire stone from Lavala Mountain, and that was quite tricky. I can't tell you. It requires strength, agility, huge muscles, real hero qualities. This sounds easy peasy in comparison. One bearer of man is nothing. I'm sure there's a catch, said Hiko. Otherwise, 11 perverse voices wouldn't have failed the task. No catch, shrug up, but only the best is good enough for this allied house. The meadow has to be made from the best honey in the world. And the bees that make the best honey in the world. Ag passed for a fact. Are the bees of Berserk? There was silence around the campfire on the beach of the broken heart. The moon's paths glittered out on the soft lapping waves and the marrowed seal houses of the boats moored in the bay danced in the starlight in the marshes behind the never birds were calling that hunting cry for their that sounded like what where are you where are you and everybody around the campfire turned to the great hulking British sensory of the island of Berserk to the south like a band over bits it was brooding with misery and longing on the skyline, and 
as if on cue, the dead of night ceremony came to an end with a great crescendo of howling, like a thousand wailing furies with a toothache, and the tops of the trees of Berserk swayed, although there was no wind to sway them. What is happening out here? Out there. Hika really, really didn't want to find out. Stuck the vest sat up to his full, proud height. He put a hand on Hika's shoulder. My son will collect this honey for the bees of Berserk or die in the antip. Isn't that right, Hika? Th th that's right, said Hika, soul in heart. That's just what I wanted to hear, roared out the allied hawk. How about Midsummer's Day for the wedding? That gives you plenty of time to die, er, collect lots of honey. So I'll expect you at Ugly Hawk Castle, Midsummer morning, five o'clock sharp with, oh, say five pots of berserk honey? Right. I rubbed his hands together with satisfaction. I think that covers everything. You won't mind if I take this room with me, will you, Stike? Anything that drifts onto his speech along to me. Before the outline had left, Hika had one more question for his future father-in-law. Kamikaze, he said, the bog burger we are looking for. Have you seen her, your outlineness? Well, said I, is Kamikaze a small blonde child about this high with hair that needs a brush and a terrible habit of trespassing on my land and stealing beautiful real moon dragons that don't belong to her. Only Ak the Allied Hawk can own a moon dragon, and anyone who steals from me will be taught a terrible lesson. That's her, said Hika, getting that awful sinking feeling again. Then I've never seen her before in my life, said Ak with one of his particularly green smells. Goodbye, Hika Horridor's head of the sir. Chapter 6 All Alone Meanwhile, somewhere not so far away, Kamikaze was singing to herself in the dark. She was singing to keep her spirits up. Kamikaze was not the kind of girl who pe panicked in a difficult situation. This was lucky, because she had been imprisoned in total blankness for a week now, in this suffocating, claustrophic, Confines of a tree trunk so narrow that she couldn't reach out and touch the walls of her cell on either side, and the all in the lock could not be picked. She knew that now, and there was nothing to dig with, and nowhere to dig to. But she was no not afraid. She told herself she was scared for her dragon, Stormfly, of course, who had been taken away by, by that awful man and put who knows where. Kamikaze hoped that Stormfly had not been locked up too, for Stormfly could not bear confi confinement. But she herself, she, Kamikaze, was not afraid, even though nobody who loved her knew where she was. The tree in the tree in which she was imprisoned was in the middle of a forest, and from the outside there was nothing about the tree that dis distinguished it from the other sorry five thousand six hundred seventy two trees standing. Immediately around it, and she could not be more elderly and compressively and mid long lost than if she had been steering the stormy petrol across a tempest tossed night sky and had accidentally dropped down a black hole in space. But I am not really lost, she said to herself, because it does not matter so much where you are as long as you know who you are. And she was a bog burger. Bur bug burglar and bug burglars do not scare easily. That was why Kamikaze started to sing the bug burglar tribal anthem, shouting it out as loudly as she could in the echoing blankness of the tree. Bug burglars know not to mean not the meaning of fear, for bug burglar hearts are stronger than a oak. Your ships. 
ship is not lost when the sea is your home, and bog burglars fight forever. Loud and defiant were the words, ringing out bl- bl- boldly within the hollowness of the tree, comforting kamikaze with every hurting echo. But outside the tree, why outside the tree, they could not be heard at all. Chapter 7 and getting married in the morning. The hooligans mended the fat penguin and carried on waist for the last search of Kamikaze for a day or so more, this time being very careful to camp on the island of the quiet life, in a camping spot with loads of jellyfish but no goats, berserks or uh, ugly hawks. Stoic the vast then sent a carrier dragon to big bobbit Persa with the sad news that they couldn't find Kamikaze anymore, and they returned back to work. Akda Ali Hal hadn't said that he had to collect the Mahani all on his own, so Stoy the Vest decided that the chances of the quest to collect honey from the island of Persa being successful would be greatly improved it. If all the warriors in the hooligan tribe joined Hiccup for a midnight dragon riding raid on the island. So this is why the next morning all 12 vikings in the warrior training program were standing at attention in a rigidly line of line in front of Gorbert de Blitch, the teacher in charge of the priest training program on Burke, decided in their black nighttime flying gear in front of the almost wood around huge hill, the highest point of Burke. Listen up, guys, rolled Gorbert de Blitch. On account of your of young Hiccup, we're here being a fiance. Cheers and smudgy, smudgy noises from the line. He cut and turned from up a tree, kissing, taunting, clueless, uh, ignoring your young brother with ears that stop up, making him look like a jock. Hey, he cut, what's it like to be in Lulurf? sneered Safan Jr. Your eyes are like two pools of green. Your hair's the reddest I've ever seen, chanted Speedfest. Ha 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 ha! Everybody rolled with laughter as he got turned blood scarlet. I don't see why we all have to risk our lives just because useless is weak enough to fall in l- l- love, sneer so love. He should be ashamed of himself writing poetry that's stupid, soupy, and his poetry is pants. Silence, yelled Gobber. This is a good chance of practice your dragon riding skills, Snow Loud. Now, Berserk is one of the most dangerous places in the archipelago because Berserks are the most terrifying warriors in the world. We must avoid capture all capture at all costs so you will be riding your dragon at full speed in the darkness well trying to avoid trees not as easy as it sounds the young warriors hadn't been dragon riding in the air for long dragon riding is a very complicated skill and it has to be learned in stages. You had to learn not only to drag your dragon to the left and right, but also up and down, virtually through the air, often at extremely speed. Dragons are such magnificent flyers that it takes years to master g- gliding, diving, flying backward, flying in formation, looping the loop, and all the other aeronautic stunts that a dragon performs naturally in the wild. Now, Roll Gobber, this is a training exercise. I have had guards, f- guards from the trees to re- present honey that you have to collect. You have to w- wave through the trees, collecting as much honey as you can, and then return here to the w- fishing line. Meanwhile, I will be pretending to be a po- a poison darting scared come berserk. Nice discusser, said Fishlax. Thank you, Fishlax, said Gober. Gober the blood, just berserk this 
excuse consisted of covering himself in work, paint, and putting a large part of his own furry underpants on his head. He, he was carrying a bow loaded with arrows taped with sticky blue yacht. What? Now, said Gobber, fro frowning pompously, if I catch you or you get hit by one of these arrows, you can consider yourself the deader than the dodos if you were in a real life burster honey collecting situation. He cleared his throat. Unto your dragons, rolled Gobber the Blatch. He, he comes riding dragon was an action untidy wa wind walker with ragged ears and even more ragged wings. Two slags got a tiny, tummy H with whining two slags. He was looking a little greener around the face than normal, but of course it was quite difficult to tell because he was as green as the green, green grass already and he had just done five cadwheels in air in a row because he was feeling a little bored with all this talking going on. Well, stop doing some some results that he got get suggested go roared Gobber, blasting on his horn. Hiccup did all right in the exercise. The windwalker was a little clumsy, but very fast at flying through the trees. Poor old fish legs had some difficulties. His chick chicken poxer was an angry little thing and reared around all the time trying to bug fish legs off, not to mention the fact that fish legs was allergic to it. So he cast it sneezing like a maniac. And then Gobber, who was really enjoying himself, his red pork pie face screaming with a banshee underneath those ridiculous furry underpants, sneaked up behind fish leg and let out an ear splitting, grave cracking, head ringing howl that would have done credit to a real poison darter, scarer, or berserk. Scourge fish legs and with an angry little shut up pony pony snort, the chicken poxer carried wildly out of control through the almost wood plowing through branches and narrowly narrowly avoid avoiding bushes and completely flattening a tender young rowan tree that had survived the great storm by a whisker and eventually char Ching had first splat into the trunk of a really quite sturdy oak like a small apartment a poplapatic susidel rhino. Luckily, chicken poxers have hats built like crash helmets, so all that happened to the chicken poxer was that he was he saw a few stars. Stars. Meanwhile, fish legs sailed over the top of the chicken poxer's head, bonked his own head on the tree, and then swung upside down from his safety loop on the saddle of the dazed chicken poxer, who went on flying distractly dis through the air like a hundred moose. Gobber the bat well. Belch caught off with them, railing at the top of his bellow and tactfully added insult to injury by shooting fish legs with arrows from his ankles to the tip of the lump on his head. That means I have hit you 18 times over, fish legs, yelled Gobber the Belch joyfully. You'll have to do better than that, boy, he bellowed, before whirling around, around his dragon and shooting after Toughnut Jr., who swirled neatly through a ticket of elders as if he were so so looming on skis. Ha 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 ha! Severed, not very sensitive young hooligans in training pulled up their dragons and spotted to laugh at poor fish legs swinging from the chicken poxer's saddle. It was, of course, highly as. Amusing, but since fish legs was 
dangling head down nearly 30 feet up in the air. It was also a bit dangerous, so he could give the reins of the windwalker a shake and swoop down the cu- and caught his friend just as his foot his foot slid out of the safety loop. He could flew fish legs down to the ground and safety. But fish legs had a recurring problem. His personal tendencies often kicked in when he was angry. When he was hit on the head, it exasperated the problem. And that was what happened now. So instead of sinking hiccup, fish legs t- turned a bright shade of pews and jumped up and down in a wild shaking furry, screaming insults at up at the laughing boys on the dragons, which of course only made them laugh even louder. Worried, Hiccup dismounted the wa- wa- wind walker and tried to calm Fishlegs down by ta- taking him by the arm. Hang on, he- there, Fishlegs. Which was a mistake because Fishlegs turned on him and shook off the arm in a fit of rage. Shall you? Will you stop interfering? I only interfered, said Hiccup seriously, to stop you from falling thirty feet onto your head. You're always interfering, your fish legs. You interfered when you said that you wrote those poems I, I spent ages writing. I did that so that Al the Alaha wouldn't murder you on the spot, said Hiccup, really worried we saw about fish legs now. Ha! The real reason is that you say I'm not good enough for a real princess. Don't you hold fish legs? Hiccup opened his mouth to stay, say that wasn't the real reason at all, but fish legs carried on. And you are because you are a royal blood, and I'm just a nobody, aren't I? I'm just a nobody from nowhere with no parents who somebody found in the harbor, and so the idea that I might end up with a beautiful princess. Princess like Tantrum is a big joke, isn't it? The boys on the dragon certainly thought it was a big joke. Snow Lord laughed so hard he nearly fell off his dragon. Um, said Gober the Blanche. I think perhaps you ought to take Fishlegs home, he got. He may need a little nap. Take his dragon with you. And the others carried on practicing, leaving Hiccup with a bird's fish legs. I don't, I did not need a little lap, said fish legs, punching the air in a barking mad sort of way. I'm perfectly fine. That's right, said soothed Hiccup, but you got a bonk. On the head, and you've gone a little berserk, and you'll feel much better after a little nap. But that's it, said Fishlegs, stopping suddenly, his mouth falling open. Why didn't I sing of this before? That's what I am. I'm a berserk. Chapter 8 Who are Fishlegs' parents? Uh, what do you mean? asked Hiccup. I mean, Fishlegs said sadly, that I was found as a baby inside this very lobster pot. He removed the basket that he was carrying on his back and showed it to the Hiccup. That's a rucksack, said Hiccup. I made it into a rucksack, explained Fishlegs, still bright red in, his, in the face and with that mad look in his eyes, because I didn't really need a lobster pot. I was found as a baby inside this actual lobster pot. I've, I'd driven into the harbor here and somebody fished me out. And of course, I must have sailed all the way from Berserk. That's, that's possible, I suppose, said Hiccup, considering it. But really, it could have been anybody who dropped you into the water. You have Berserk ten- tendencies. That not quite the same thing as being a full blown howling at the moon, crazy as the lo- loon berserk. But Fishlegs wasn't listening, and he really did look quite berserk as he stood there yelling. I see now that what I'm supposed to do, fate is showing me the way here. This is the quest in which I finally got to be the hero. I'm going to go to the berserk right now alone, and I find. I'm going to fill this lobster pot with five pots of honey, and then I'm going to come back here, and nobody else will have to risk their lives. And want that? And want that? 
no, the smug smile, the smug smile of Snowball's face. Then everybody will stop laughing at me. He can look at fish legs, open mouth. But tonight is a full moon. The bursters will be right splat bang in the middle of the dead of night ceremony. Excellent, said fish legs exhaustedly. I can join in. Hiccup says Susley, you know what fish legs? I think Gobber was right. You need to go home and have a little nap. Fish legs look motions. You don't want me to go alone and be a hero. Of course I do, said Hiccup sealed in that soothing way. Just not tonight. So Hiccup took a cross crazy fish legs home and that appeared to be the end of the matter but much later when hika went to check if fish legs was feeling better there was no sign of him no fish legs no lobster pot no chicken poster but there was a note addressed to hika but Hika put underneath a stone outside Fishlake's front door, written in loopy, crazy, well handing handwriting that indicated that the Berserk mood had not yet left Fishlake's. Dear Hika, I have gone to burst alone after all because this was all my fault in the first place, and this is my chance to be a hero for once, and not a big joke. If I get caught by Berserk, I think they will not hurt me when I tell them I am I am family. Do not follow me. I can do this on my own. Best friend. Best wishes, fish likes. P.S. Give dogs press the do bring a big kiss from me. P.P.S. I think my mother was a teapot. Oh, sir, umbrellas. He got shift and she'll shift anxiously from foot to foot. How can I not follow him? I should never left him on his own. What am I going to do? What should he have done? He come knew from be bitter experience that if he went to his father, stuck the fast wouldn't think Fishlegs was important enough to risk the safety of the whole trip by going to Bursk on a full moon. I'll have to follow him to Bursk myself, said Hiccup. No, 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 said Tuslas, landing on Hiccup's head. N -n Not a good idea. You c c keep on not listening to me. Can I go home now? Tuslas really got a tummy age. Oh, I'm sorry, Tuslas, said Hika. I'm a little... Uh, easy tracted, distracted because of fish legs. The reason for Tuslas tummy age became apparent when he attempted to flap on Hiccup's head and couldn't do it. His tummy remained jump, jammed to the helmet and he just stuck there flapping his wings wildly and squirreling. What are you doing, Tuslas? asked Hiccup. Tuslas stuck. Well, Tuslas, another clue that fish legs was still feeling a bit crazy. He got took off his helmet. How externally. Tuslas Tommy was indeed stuck off the helmet. Tuslas, said he cup, you were playing in my father's room this morning. You didn't swallow my father's magic stone, did you? Carefully he got pulled the little dragon off his helmet and cradled him in his arms. Wanted to see if it could make Tuslas magic. Please, Tuslas in a small voice. Personally, his big eyes filled with tears, and now Tusa doesn't feel very well. Oh, Tuslas! Sighed he got spoons, magic stones. If people tell you not to do things, why do you always autumnally go off and do them? Hika couldn't take Tusas back home because he didn't dare wait any longer to follow fish legs. So he took the honey collecting jars out of the basket on his back leaving them in a row outside Fishlake's door, and then he tore out some heather from the ground and put it in the bottom of the basket to make a nice springly bed for Toothless. The little dragon climbed in, groaning, and incessantly fell asleep, curled up in the dragon's sleeping knot. Hika put the 
Buzz got back on his shoulder and go onto the wind walker back and took off into the sky of off to the island of Berserk. So this was how he found himself approaching the woods that hold on the back of the wind walker at eleven o'clock on the night of a full moon. The forests of the dark dark ages were a fearsome scene. They were not pleasant, early in the woods, but great and terrible jungles, impenetrable in some parts, that spread over vast areas of the mainland to the east and were stalked by wolves and bears and wild men who fed on human flesh and dragons tops are uh, unspeakable that no one dared enter. This was such a forest. It was indecorably dark as they soared through the trees top spot. The eye beams of the wind walker lit the way before them like searchlights. Great swarms of buzzing bees formed and reformed in the eye beams. Every now and then they came across the startled black and white face to stink dragon or a squirrel squirrel serpent surrounded by a bus of furious insects, its muscle covered with honey. At one point, the wind walker only just jumped out of the way of the great 50-foot long, long bee-eater dragon drifting calmly through the canopy with a gigantic cave of a mount mouth wide open, like an enormous basking shark. He could try not to sing about another deeper noise, however, way, way down in the blankness. It was the noise that had given the woods their name, the woods that howled, and he did not want to sing about it, not for a second. But he knew what it was. It was the beast. On through the forest they flew, looking and looking for fish fish legs. They found nothing but trees, trees and more trees. And then he could pull sharp, sharply on the reins of the wind walker as they came upon from upon something unexpected up ahead. What is that? whispered Hiccup. A silent break in the canopy allowed the dappled moonlight to shine through until well weird shape hovering in the air beside a large honey tree. It was a shape absolutely covered from head to toe in tiny little creatures like large black butterflies clustering sickly and crawling all over it like a living cert. Over the shape they swarmed. The moonlight wa the moonlight shining on this on their revolting blue bottle wings, and as they removed, shimmering, they made a noise that he could recognize to be dragonous. What is it? What is it? What is it? They were saying to each other in high little voices, like the singing of goats. I don't know. I don't know. Came their weird little replies, and then. Do I smell fear? I'm sure I smell fear. Shall we wait? Shall we taste? Shall we taste? And with absolute honor, horror, he saw the saw two round terrified eyes staring out of the moving blanket of creatures and re realized that the shade was fish legs and chicken poxer hovering in the air, frozen in terror and covered all over in a sick carpet of scares. The windwalker drifted forward, pre-trip, pre and Hiccup had not even had time to sing what he could possibly do when he felt a whir of wings past his ear and a soft plop as something small and furry and flaunty with horrible tiny little mouse, claw mouse claws landed on the back of his neck. Chapter 9. Scutters up until that point, Fishlax had really been doing very well. All on his own, he had flown into the woods that howled. Under the protection of his berserk mood, he hadn't felt frightened at all of flying through the dark forest. Brave as a lion, he had filled five pots of honey from five different honey trees. We saw drop 
dropping a single jar onto the forest floor before. F floor below. He had been stung three times by bees, and he didn't even care. But then, just as he had placed the fifth and final jar in the rust sack, and with joyous excitement was about to get the chicken poxter soaring out of the woods, he started his heart singing. I'm here! I'm here! Just at the moment, something happened. Who knows what it was? A strange noise, perhaps. A sudden cloud drifting over the moon so that he was in absolute darkness for a moment. But whatever he, it was that spoke, Spooking caused the sudden disappearance of his personal mood as quickly as Mrs. Mysteriously as it had descended upon him. Fear stole upon Fishlax as he sat in the heart of those woods, and as soon as he began to get frightened, that was when the scar scars came. Scars are blind and a little deaf, but they like uh, to feed upon blood that is filled with the adrenaline caused by fear. And so when a human or an animal is filled with fear, that is when they smell them, and gather in thick, cloudy black swarms called flutters, ten flutters tens of thousands strong. fish like and the chicken poxers stay absolutely still as the scarers settled upon them, and instinctively they had hit on the right thing to do, for if they stayed still and calmed their panic, and scarers might scuttle all over them and then move on, deciding they were a tree or something else in a devil. Oh, for sore's sake, oh, for sore's sake, what do I do, selfish Lex? And that was when he met Hiccup's eyes and realized that Hiccup was sitting on the hovering wa wind walker only 20 feet or so away. Fishlex was only pleased to see Hiccup, but never in his life had been more pleased to see him than now. Hiccup knew all about dragon behavior. What should I do? Mouse Fishlex, you're doing the right thing, kiss Hiccup. Don't move a muscle. Hiccup and Toothless and the Windwalker also froze. Hiccup could feel the horrible scares landing on his neck, on his arms, on his legs, on his chest, on his face, even starting to crawl slowly down the back of his collar. Trembling violently, Fishless tried to force himself to stay calm, not to react. But if you have ever been crawled only over by spiders, by bats, or by a swarm of angry bees, you will know how very, very hard it is not to panic. Even if a single wasp lands on your arm, it can be hard not to jerk your arm away instinctively, even though you know that it's not the right thing to do. So just imagine how difficult it would be if thousands and thousands of scarers were swarming all over your body, all over your face even, and maybe they would climb on your nostrils or, or in your ears. It was this thought that made Fishlex lose it completely and who can who came blame him, frankly. Fishes scream, and at exactly the same moment, three scarlets beat the chicken boxer on the bottom. And the chicken boxer wasn't the kind of dragon to take this lightly. He gave a violent swish of his tail and a maddened buck, and he carried off through the jungle like a fat little chicken boxer chunk of lightning, narrowing missing two trees and with Fishless screaming wildly and flapping away with his arms on a chicken boxer's back. The sc scary buzzed away in a frenzy and froze of rolling Sima before swarming after them in zooming black clouds, and Fishless losing it tipped, he cup over the edge and he too started screaming. The windwalker bogged in the air before following the others in madded out of control person. Oh, for sure's sake, saw the terrified hiccup as he waved the windwalker between the trees. This is going to end in disaster, just like Fishless crashing head first in the training practice. Flying for your life at full speed in the dark of the 
lies through the forest of Berserk was a very different matter. He got discovered from that little saunter through the trees in the almost wood. Apart from the skill needed to avoid the dis- densely grown trees of the forest, there was a little matter of the swarms of excited scarers in hot pursuit. Hika realized the scarers were actually shouting out as they followed through the darkness in their weird sing-song scary voices. We're going to gr- get you. We can't to see you, not tri- strictly true because they're blind, but frightening no ones. That of course made the boys and the dragons e- even more scared, and so they gave off even more fear, her hormones, which, which the pursuing scarlet smelled, and that turned them even more crazy and buzzing in a perfect fever of wild hunting excitement, and they swarm. After the boys with a high pitched screaming whine that woke up more scarers to join in the pursuit. And all in all, it was a mad, crazy body channel filled dragon chased that zigzag and zoomed hysterically through the dark trees of the woods that howled that moonla- moonlit summer night. Thank you for following me. Hiccup, yell fish legs as they charge like manic manic manics through the forest, breaking off twigs and branches and scattering shoals of square square serpents as they as they went. No problem, Hiccup shouted back. I'm not interfering, am I? He said anxiously. He said anxiously as he missed a full uncomfortation with a bee eater dragon by whisker. Of course not, said Fishless. You're oh helping. I was crazy when I said that. And then this can't go on much longer, said he come. As the poor maddened windwalker's wings tipped through the violently to the left, skimming the t- trunk of a tree as they sped little sped like bullets through the through the tree canopy, he got was right. This could this couldn't go much longer. The yelling, winning, buzzing chased past a gigantic sleeping dragon drive up in the tree pot. Tree tops, showering it in torn off twigs and shared shared wheels of leaf confetti as it as it went screaming past and the dragon opened one a eyelid and then another and then joined the chase in two bits of his languid wings and looking over the shoulder he got saw a great dragon with his wings spread out like sails catching up with them he barely had time to scream before tumor appeared and there was a strange noise like zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz